They say that talking to yourself is a sign of insanity. But I think that's only if you find yourself answering back. Right? Right. This is Talking to Myself, a podcast where I try to use events and anecdotes from my past to make myself a better artist and maybe a better person. Hopefully other people can get some use out of this, but mostly I'm just trying to avoid paying for therapy. Today's podcast is about working with what you have at hand. And I'll start today with a story from my past, as usual. When I was approximately 12 or 13, my dad gave me a bag of wood. Now that sounds like an odd thing to do. And what do I mean by bag of wood exactly? Uh, What I mean by bag of wood is a paper bag. Grocery bags used to be paper back in the dinosaur times that I'm from. This was a wooden bag full of shaped wooden pieces, like doorknobs, uh, the ends of dowels, some edging, molding, decorative frame pieces, basically all just shaped random loose end pieces of wood that you probably get as scrap stuff. I think he got it as part of a trade for some antique tools or something. He was always collecting stuff like that. He knew that I liked to be creative. He'd never been terribly supportive of my artistic ideas. In fact, I believe when I first mentioned I want to do comic books, he told me I could never possibly make a living making funny books and discouraged me from trying to see it as a career, which is not unusual, and I understand why he did it, but it also set me back several years. I don't know, it's not my, it's not his fault that I'm not more further along in my art career than I am now, but it would have been nice to have more support. That's beside the point. The man gave me a bag of wood. And he said, hey, here you go, you can make something cool out of this. And I was like, great, that sounds cool, I'll make something cool out of this. And this is a widely disparate collection of shapes and sizes and things, which is good for creativity. It's it's interesting to have a large collection of unfamiliar objects to to work around with. But um, just to illustrate how sometimes people that aren't creative necessarily see creative people, he didn't include any means to attach the wood to itself. No glue, no nails, no screws, nothing. So unless you want to make stacks of irregular shaped wood, you're kind of out of luck. I mean, I found my own glue later, and I made some some stuff out of it, little sculptures and things. But uh, the idea was, it was on me. I don't know if that was intentional on his part, or if he just didn't think about it. Probably the latter. The point of this story, as far as it relates to my past and my supposed reconciliation with my artistic journey, as they say, it's important to remember that you can use whatever you have at hand as long as you know what you're doing with it, as long as you know that you can do something with it. You can make art with anything, pretty much anything. Before there was such a thing as paint, I'm sure there were people drawing with burnt sticks. I mean, charcoal has been around since there have been people, since there's been fire. And I'm sure someone noticed that, hey, this makes marks on things. And if I can make a mark on something, I can represent what's in my head and other people can see it. I mean, that's probably the foundation for writing, communication, and art as well. The point of this is artists shouldn't be afraid to try new materials. In fact, I encourage any artist, including myself, to always try new materials as much as you possibly can, especially if you're worried about something or if you find yourself being precious with your art there's some reason why you feel like you shouldn't do something because you'll mess it up. Trying a new material is a great way to get past that because, honestly, how good do you expect to be with something you just picked up? If you can draw really well, whatever your style happens to be, let's say realism, let's say you can do really realistic portraiture with charcoal, that's great. If you pick up a brick and try to draw on a piece of wood, it has similar effects, but you're not going to be able to do that right off. Why would you be able to? Why would you even think you could be able to? It's a brick. It's not charcoal. Even though it it has the same kind of texture, it lays on the surface similarly. It's different. You shouldn't be so hard on yourself. So one of the ways to get around being hard on yourself is to try new materials all the time. It's one of the reasons I'm always looking for new things to try and trying new things all the time. I mean, it's it's almost like an obsession. If I come across an art material, I kind of have to try it out. Because... Not only is it something fun to do, I mean, artists love doing that, it's also a way for me to get past the point of thinking, well, you know, I can't really do this. 
Artists are plagued by self-doubt. If you're an artist listening to this, I'm sure you've dealt with this before. If you're not an artist listening to this, artists are plagued with self-doubt. <laughs> and the only way to get past it is to produce something we feel is worthwhile. And using new materials is a good way to just jump in. Uh, another reason to try out something new is uh, there's a great chance that you might have a happy accident. A happy accident is a phrase coined, I believe, um, don't quote me on this, but I believe Bob Ross, the great esteemed painter Bob Ross, the person who brought painting to the masses, one of the first people I ever saw paint in my life, in, in real, real time, so to speak, on public television when I was a kid. He showed me that you can do this. Anyone can do this. Those oil paintings you see in the museum by the dead people, that's not a lost art. That's not something that takes a lifetime to learn how to do. Anyone can do this. And if you try something new, you might find that you like a certain effect. It's awesome. Something seems to be really easy, and it comes out to be like the way you like it to work. I remember the first time I used a brush pen, which is a like a refillable pen with ink and brush tip. So it's like using a brush and ink, but it refills itself all the time. The thing about that is you can get thick and thin control over the line in one stroke. And you can make all kinds of special effects just by accidentally wiggling your hand a little as you move the, the pen across the paper. For someone who deals in texture as much as I do, that was a godsend, learning that tool. Or having some fun with that tool. I wouldn't say I've learned it. Certainly not mastered it. So trying new materials all the time is a good way to have happy accidents and discover something you might like. Also, it's a good way to find a new favorite tool for a certain method of art you like. You get it deeply into line art. There are lots of materials that can make lines. It's not just not just pens. It's not just pencils. Anything that can scratch can make a line. A very self-contained, defined line. I've seen lots of scratchboard art that's amazing. You can do all kinds of crazy things with art. It's almost anything. You can break a piece of glass, and the lines in that can be your art. The whole world is your toolbox if you're willing to try. Also, using there's one another good, um, like objectively good reason to use alternative methods and techniques and materials. Uh, generally speaking, stuff that's not supposed to be art supplies is cheaper than things that are supposed to be art supplies. A box of kids' crayons is pretty cheap compared to chalk pastels or oil pastels that you buy at the art store, and you can do a lot of the same things with them. A number two pencil that you can buy almost for nothing is probably one of the most versatile art tools ever designed by humankind, even without an eraser. And most of the time they do have an eraser. So yeah, don't don't ever think that you can't make art because you can't afford materials. There's something out there that you can get your hands on that you can make art with if you want to. And you should try it. There's also one other little thing about it. It's not as big a deal as the other ones, but techniques that you learn in certain art tools can transfer to other art tools. I mentioned the brick um, let's say a brick on a piece of wood, right? It leaves kind of a chalky, smudgy kind of look. If you get good with that somehow, you could. Then you might find that using chalk on a board, which is very similar, would be easier for you. And that might lead you to do another dry media like pastels might turn out to be very easy for you. If you start out using uh, ink with a brush, and start adding a little bit of water here and there, you tend to get washes. That might lead into being better at watercolor, blending colors together. A lot of the techniques and, and muzzle memory that you're going to learn from doing art is going to be transferable directly to other materials. So there's almost absolutely no reason not to use as many art materials as you can get your hands on. If you have an idea, then feel free to grab anything and just make it. If you find yourself stuck in a rut artistically, like you keep drawing the same thing over and over again, you can't think of anything to draw. This happens a lot. I've mentioned it once before already, and we're only on episode four here. This happens a lot with artists. What am I going to draw? What am I going to do? I'm stuck. I can't do anything else. I'm only capable of drawing this one thing. Okay, maybe that's possible. That's possible. That's true. Um, aside from using reference to learn how to draw new things, try drawing this thing you can already draw with another material. If you only draw portraits in graphite, which is a lot of people's entry to art. Try doing portraits in ink. Try doing portraits in chalk. You know, it's something familiar enough to keep you in engaged and you can use the skills you already have, but you can learn the material that way because the difference is what you're learning. And then once you've got a master on portraits in chalk, maybe you can use chalk to do something else that chalk is very suited for. Like this, maybe you moved on to a still life or something with dramatic lighting or even abstract stuff. 
there's a way to get anywhere in art from anywhere else, and materials is one of the best roads to do that. It's a minor issue compared to the others, I think, but uh, it's still a strong one. So the point today, to remind myself, and hopefully help someone else, is that there's a plethora of art materials out there at your fingertips. And sometimes all you need to do is get your hands on some glue. This has been Talking to Myself again. I do this once a week or so. Thank you to the patrons who have supported me thus far. You guys get to hear this a week earlier than everyone else. If you're interested in that, then check out my Patreon. It's just under Nathan Seabolt, like everything else on social media for me. And as always, thank you everybody for listening. I hope this helped you, and I hope it helps me too. See you next time.